Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zing here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online BGC 15 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. If you have not seen last night's episode of Team Review Thursday, I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description below. Some of you guys may remember that series where you guys submit your teams to me and I edit and analyze one of them in front of all of you. We featured a pretty cool Got the Tell team in yesterday's episode and I was a huge fan of it, so I hope you guys go enjoy that. We're just going to jump back onto the ladder currently with a rating of 1820, so in the last couple of days, you know, it's really been uh, a win and then a loss. So. Two wins today would probably put us around 1840, 1850 range, and that would be really nice. Uh, rankings though reset for around another two weeks or so, so there's no real pressure there, but this team has done a fantastic job for us, picking us uh, up a lot of wins. And once again, thanks to Lightcore VGC for allowing me to use this team. I really think all the episodes this week have been fantastic, so if you've not seen them, definitely check them out as well. Probably the best week of Road to Rank we've had so far in terms of quality of matches, but I, I think half of it is the team. The team's just really solid, allows for some really good games, and we've also got matched up with really, really cool teams and opponents as well. So I'm excited for what today has in store for us. As always, if you enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. We're going to find Ovation from New Jersey with a rating of 17.1. I actually believe this is x Ray's Ovation, who uh, runs his own YouTube channel with around 10k plus subs. Really cool guy. He actually does a lot of VGC content, I believe. So I'll link him in the description below if you guys want to see more VGC content. Uh, he's running a rain team here. Looks pretty familiar to what we were actually using last week of Polytoad, Metagross, Hydreigon, Talonflame, Ludicolo, and Thunderous. We've run into a lot of rain matchups with this team so far. Haven't lost yet, but they've given us a lot of trouble. Uh, and his team definitely here is problematic especially with the Metagross, because Metagross can knock out the Clefairy in one hit with an Iron Head. So, Metagross probably the biggest threat to my team, and I'm going to want to figure out what to lead with properly. It's funny because, you know, do you, I don't know if you guys remember that last game where, um, not the last game, but last time when I brought Heatran against the Rain, not the best of calls. I'm not sure if it's really a good idea to bring it here either. Um, you know, Naturally, you don't really want to bring Heatran or Excadrill against Rain because they're both weak to water types, though. Excadrill, you could definitely make a case for here because Rock Slide hit, knocks out the Talonflame. It does a lot of damage to Thunderous. Earthquake hits both Metagross and Hydreigon. The real issue is if he's like Scarf Toad, and especially if he, forgot, he has something like Surf, which, you know, I was running on my previous Scarf Toad. He doesn't have any redirection, though. I think that might be important. Leaning towards leading with Scrafty Thunderous here. Uh, I do like that, I think, with Salamence in the back. I don't know, Clefairy's actually still pretty good here though because I can Thunder Wave. Uh, and I think Thunder Wave can be pretty important. So maybe I'll go Clefairy Salamence in the back. Yeah, I actually like that. I'm going to lock in, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, definitely not a fantastic matchup for me, but we've been able to play around Rain the last couple of days, so hopefully we'll manage to do so today as well. But I'm excited for this match. Kevin's a really great opponent, we've played a bunch in the past, and it should be a fun game. Uh, He's also sitting in the 1700s, which is obviously a pretty decent rating there. Um, quite high. So I'm going to lead Scrafty Thunderous against Metagross Ludicolo. Alright, not bad, I'll take that. So Intimidate doesn't work immediately here, but the thing is, because he did not set up the rain, I can outspeed him. Um, you know, it's not exactly the most ideal lead matchup, but it's also not the worst. Um... I'm gonna really want to knock out, want to knock out that Metagross though, because I think if I can knock out Metagross, then Salamence kind of has a field day here, or Clefairy can come in and that helps Salamence set up. So that's what I'm going for. Though I could also just try to knock out Ludicolo immediately. I mean, I think right now the best place to just fake out Metagross. Um, I would guess he's gonna Mega Evolve. Actually, do I even want to fake out Metagross? I mean, he has to fake out Scrafty or Thunderous, and it's a better play for him to fake out Scrafty actually. I would say. So I could go for the safe fake out trade this first turn, but then he could actually protect Metagross, which is what I'm fearing the most. Kind of want to go for the knockoff onto Ludicolo. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to try to knock out Ludi, actually. I'm going to go for a knockoff and a... Do I want to Volt Switch? I'll Volt Switch the Metagross. Yeah. Okay, he's going to Mega Evolve, so that... Uh, I mean, when you're using Mega Metagross, typically you Mega Evolve and protect the first turn, but let's see how this first turn plays out. You could also just fake out my Thunderous. He's gonna go for the fake out onto... Scrafty. Okay, cool. So I get a free Volt Switch off against the Metagross, which is nice. Uh, question is, who do I want to bring in? I could bring in Salamence, get the Intimidate off immediately, and then put on pressure against the Ludicolo, though he might have gone for like an Ice Punch against Thunderous. I don't think Clefairy is really strong enough of a Pokemon to bring in, though. So, you know what? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to bring in Salamence. I'm not expecting an Ice Punch. Might take some damage here, but I've also got Roost, which can help out a lot in this matchup. More importantly, I get the Intimidate off against his Metagross. 
Nope, he's gonna go for the Zen headbutt, which is fine. I'll probably do around 40-50%. Yep, actually under. Uh, that's actually really, really good for me. Because I brought in Salamence for free, I can go straight for the... I'm just gonna go knock off onto Metagross, Mega Evolve, and return onto Ludicolo. Though, actually no. I'm going to double up into Ludi with a return and a knockoff. If he switches out, then I can pick up the K on whatever uh, comes in. Uh, Metagross might want to protect here, so... Like, one reason why I'm making this play is I could definitely see Thunders coming in, but he's actually going to switch out the Metagross into Poliwetoad. I'm really hoping that means that he did not switch out. Unless he pulled a double switch here would be a really good play on his end. Uh, regardless, though, it's going to mean I pick up a knockout here or I get a lot of damage off. He's not going to pull the switch, so unless this Ludicolo somehow is Protect, which I'm not anticipating it to, I should be able to knock it out with Return and knock off Poliwetoad's item, which can get rid of a potential Choice Scarf. Yep, he's not going to have Protect here. Return comes out, picks up the knockout. Perfect turn. That's basically, that's even better than I was hoping for, because I avoided any damage. And Scrafty gets the knockoff onto Polytoad, which can remove a potential Choice Scarf. And I get the crit there, so really lucky. And lo and behold, he does have the Scarf. So, that indicates to me he probably doesn't have Protect. Um, and because he doesn't have Protect, I can safely double up onto that slot the next turn. The game is still definitely far from over, but that was as good of a turn as I could have asked for. You know, pick up the knockout onto Ludi, which was a huge threat to Salamence. Get rid of Polytoad's Scarf, which means I outspeed him now. Um, and not take any damage like couldn't have asked for a better turn i think metagross is a better switch in for him here but we'll see now one thing to note is and he's he is going to bring the metagross to no surprise um zen headbutt probably knocks out salamence so might want to consider pulling a switch here um you could also actually no this is what i'm gonna do i like this play more i'm gonna switch scrafty out into clefairy and go for the safe protect here. This way I can go for a fake out return onto Polito the following turn without much uh, issue. And by bringing Clefairy, the friend guard actually allows it so like he can't knock me out with the Metagross. Unless he's got Helping Hand with Polito, but he had a Choice Scarf. So it's very unlikely we're going to see Helping Hand come out from it. So, so far so good, but, you know, still far from over, but having Scarf Thunderous T in the back also gives me some confidence, because it can, Thunderbolt can knock out either of his Pokemon. He's also not going to switch out here, which is really good for me. So, he, oh, the Hammer Arm coming out! That was not a move I was expecting, but I'll take that any day. Uh, Clefairy takes that with ease, even after that critical hit, that also decreases Metagross's speed as he Ice Beams into my Salamence, which is really, really good for me here. Um, for a bunch of reasons, but now let's see. So I'm very curious as to what his last Pokemon is, because, I mean, that's basically going to determine the matchup. I feel like it's not going to be Thunderous. I feel like it's going to be Hydreigon or Talonflame. Um, because of that, he's got Hammer Arm, Zen Headbutt, and Iron Head, so he doesn't have Ice Punch or Substitute, which is really good news for me. I could also I could go for the Follow Me here. I could also switch back out into Scrafty. Uh, but no, I'm actually just going to go for the Protect here with Clefairy and the Return onto Politoed. Uh, pick up a knockout here or force out a switch. He's not going to switch out, so I'm going to knock out Politoed. Also means good news for me because that Scrafty in the back can reshuffle the Intimidate. So should be able to knock out the Politoed here. And the reason why I protected is because uh, Zen Headbutt won't even knock me out. And I want to protect myself from an Iron Head. Uh, he actually, smartly enough, goes for the Iron Head onto Salamence, which was actually a really good play. Should have read into that and just gone for the Thunder Wave onto Metagross. But hey, that's fine. And Talonflame's his last one, which is really good news for me here. So things are playing out quite well, especially with that Scarf Thundy in the back. Should be game, but it's never over until it's actually over. So I'm going to go for the follow me here, and I'm just going to go for the return onto Talonflame. I presume he's choice banned, but he's actually not, so that's like the one thing like he could have had to help him get back into this match. With that being said, though, he's probably going to knock out my Clefairy here with an Iron Head. I get a free switch into either Scrafty or Thunders. Honestly, both are perfectly fine at this rate. Um, as, yep, Iron Head does connect here. So, you know... I was going for that play, presuming that maybe he was, for example, as Iron Head crits there. I probably would have knocked it out. Um, presuming he was choice banded, he's not going to be banded, but that's okay. Because of that, I'm going to bring in Scrafty here. Now, he actually kind of has to go for the double protect, so I'm wondering if I want to predict that and pull out a switch. Mm. Even if he gets the double, though, I think I can still win. Because then Talonflame being intimidated can't even knock me out. Yeah, I'm just going to go for the fake out and the return. Though, now I'm really curious. Do I want to predict this double? <laughs> mm. I'll play it safe. I mean, it's a one-third chance he gets it. I could also roost here. Do I want to roost? <laughs> I could also switch Scrafty out into Thunderous and roost, but that's not exactly a good play. Um... 
fake out and roost the return. You know what? I'm just gonna return. If he gets the oh, yep, he's not gonna go for it. Okay, cool, perfect. So I could have almost out predicted myself there, but fortunately not the case. Salamence's return should knock out Talonflame here, as it does. Perfect. So Talonflame's gonna go down. Metagross is gonna get one last attack off, but then Thunderous T comes in and Zen Headbutts for the win. Salamence actually avoids that uh, Zen Headbutt as well. So uh, RNG was definitely in my favor here with the crit on Politoed uh, and the miss there, though I don't really think uh, it really determined the match here. I think basically knocking out the Ludicolo was really really crucial, and he didn't have any safe switches to return once he led with Ludicolo and Metagross. Uh, to be quite honest, I was a bit surprised to see that lead, so I'm just going to go for the Roost here, forcing him to target that slot. Um, but he's going to go for the Hammer Arm, which should do around 30-40%. Yep, doesn't even bring me under 50%, so you see how good these Intimidates are with this team. Scrafty gets the knockoff off, um, now he's going to be slower, and this Fallen turn, I can just go for the return and the knockoff to finish up the game. So, really great game there. Uh, Surprisingly, despite how poor the rain matchup here, you know, figuring out ways to beat it, and that's what I love about BGC, even if the matchup isn't in your favor, you can always figure out a way to actually pull through and come out with a win. So, Salamence's return is going to connect with Metagross here, and should be enough to pick up the knockout, so perfect. Uh, ultimately, you know, I did not bring my Excadrill or my Heatran, he didn't bring Thunderous or his Hydreigon, I do feel like Pokemon choice-wise, uh, those were the best four Pokemon I probably could have had in the entire match. Uh, the lead matchup just played out perfectly, and it really started right from that first turn. By being able to bring in that Salamence for free, I was able to put on pressure into Ludicolo, and you saw there, because he had Metagross out, um, and Ludicolo, he had no safe switch into a return, so he had either to just sacrifice the Ludicolo, um, personally, if I were him, I think it would have been a bit better to actually switch the Ludicolo out into Politoed, because might have been able to tank a return, and then, you know, you set up the rain for the Ludicolo in the back, so, um... You know, from his perspective, that's probably the move I would have done for him, because I, I think Ludicolo was too important in that matchup just to give up immediately, and that's why I was very pleased. I mean, that is also why I went for the double target there, because I was expecting Metagross to switch out after the Intimidate. Um, so, I probably could have picked up like Heo onto Politoed, but then I would have had to deal with Ludicolo and Metagross, and I think if uh, he wanted to beat me in that game, he had to rely on having both sweepers out at the same time. So, should be exciting, but you know... That's that's the thing. One one smart switch, one uh, uh, attack, one volt switch can really just turn the battle completely around immediately. As we're gonna find a 1610 rated player from Japan for our second opponent of the day. <laughs> the rain never stops, man. Polytoed Kingdra, Escavalier, Cradelli, Volcarona, and Swampert in this match. I can't believe how many rain teams we faced. I really can't. Uh, this one is also a bit more unorthodox, you know, Escavalier, not exactly, it's actually picked up a lot of popularity, especially in Japan recently. Um, Cradelli, Volcarona, and Swampert, all of those not exactly the most common of Pokemon, especially that Cradelli. Uh, I've not really faced one in VGC in really ever, um, maybe played one here and there, but it's actually kind of problematic for me here, I think. Uh, difficult team, for sure, to match up against. I think it's so funny how many rain- this is, I think, what, the fifth rain team we've played this week? That is honestly kind of funny to me. Um, and figuring out what to lead with is really important here. I don't want to mess up. I'm leaning towards Solomon's Clefairy here, though. And I do like that, yeah. Honestly, I'm leaning towards Solomon's Clefairy, Scrafty, and Thunderous. This time, you know, last time I led with Thunderous and Scrafty, um, because I was afraid of the Ludicolo, which has Fake Out and Scarf Toad, but now I can just redirect attacks away from Clefairy and maybe Dragon Dance or Thunder Wave. So I'm going to lock in here, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, that Cradelli is actually very threatening, especially with Storm Drain, which I assume it has. Um, don't really know its moveset here, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, Rain, you know, always, always, always a really popular strategy. We featured on, we featured it on Road to Rank just a couple of weeks ago. Or was it last week? I think it was last week, yeah. Um, so I'm going to leave with Salamence and Clefairy here, as we are going to see Politoed and... Kingdra come out here. Okay, that's alright. Uh, this is already interesting to me. I wonder what he's going to go for. Okay, Drizzle activates before Intimidate. Great news for me here. Confirms he's Choice Scarfed. Um, so that is definitely solid knowledge to gain here. Because he's Scarfed, what do I want to do? <laughs> so, if I were him, what would I do? Do you Ice Beam into Salamence? Or do you just go for a water type attack expecting to follow me? Mmm, kinda wanna protect and thunder wave the Kingdra here. But I also kinda just wanna go for a Dragon Dance right away. But then if he goes for an Ice Beam, that would be deadly. And there's little reason, I guess, to Ice... 
I don't know, but follow me is so easy to predict. Hmm. I could also switch out into Scrafty. You know what? I'm actually going to switch out into Scrafty and go for the Thunder Wave onto Kingdra. Uh, reason why I'm switching to Scrafty here is I get a Fake Out. Um, he's, I mean, I guess Muddy Water does a good amount of damage, so perhaps that wasn't the best switch in terms of momentum, but if I can paralyze his Swift Swim users or just his fast Pokemon, then I can just KO him with Thunderous and Salamence. Oh, but he, wow, he's Scarfed Helping Hand, I guess? Interesting. When you go straight for the Surf. Yeah, so I should have stayed in and gone f Oh, that was a- was that even a crit? Probably not. Life Orb, Kingdra. Okay. So I get the Thunder Wave off. Yeah, that did a lot of damage, and I'm a bit upset because I was so close to going straight for the Dragon Dance, but hey, I paralyzed Kingdra, and that's always good, and he did a lot of damage to his own Poliwhirl, which is kind of funny to me. Um, let's see. I, I feel like he's going to switch Politoed out into the... The, 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 I'm blanking out, uh, the Swamper. So I'm wondering if I should predict that switch Scrafty back out into Salamence. No, he went for the Helping Hand and his Drizzle went before Intimidate. I don't, I have to assume he's Scarf Toad, so he's probably going to switch out here, right? Um, that would make the most sense to me, at least. If I were him, I'd switch out and protect with the Kingdra. So I kind of want to predict that, switch out into my own Salamence and go for a Moonblast onto the Kingdra in case he decides to stay in. But Scrafty switches out first, which, which means I'm guessing he's not switching out. Maybe his Polytoad is like max speed, timid? That might outspeed the Salamence since I'm not actually 100% confident on this EV spread since uh, it was given to me by Lycor, but let's see. Oh, nope, he's not Scarfed. But he Scald Salamence, hopefully no burn! Okay, and he Surfs himself. Uh, even Paralyzed Kingdra outspeeds. That's alright though. So that wasn't the best of terms. I mean, I could have just gone for the fake out play there. Uh, I just kind of mind blowing as Polytoad is faster. It's a really speedy Polytoad, but that's all right. I'm going to bring in, who do I want to bring in? Bring in Scrafty. No, I kind of want to bring in Thunderous here, actually. Yeah, I'm going to bring that. Yeah, I could just Thunderbolt, Mega Evolve, Return Kingdra. That's what I'm going to go for. Oh, but no, I'm going to Grass Knot there, in case he switches out into the Swamper. I don't think he is, but uh, if I think right now the biggest issue for me to deal with is actually that Swamper. I haven't played the first couple of turns too well, honestly. I was not expecting really speedy Politoed, uh, so much to the point where it outspeeds Salamence. But he really got me with that Helping Hand Surf, too. I'm really upset at myself for not going for the Dragon Dance play. I think Follow Me Dragon Dance probably would have been a better call right from the start, because uh, then I could have just returned, knocked out Politoed, went for another Follow Me. Um, oh, and he switches out Politoed. Is that Swamper coming in? Show me Swamper. Is that Swamper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Alright, so let's see how this plays out. So I'm going to Mega Evolve here, I'm going to be able to outspeed, and I should be able- I mean, I'm definitely knocking out Swampert. That is so huge! It's like the one thing I needed to get back into this game. I'm sure he's not expecting this Grass Knot, but Grass Knot would have knocked out Politoed anyway. That picks up the one-hit KO with the crit there, just overkill now, knocking out the Swampert, which is perfect. I think Return will knock out Kingdra. Um, I'm hoping it does. If not, it might cause some issues. And it does. Perfect. Wow, what a huge turn there! Exactly what I needed to win this game, and that's the thing. If the matchup's not good, you gotta make big plays, man. You gotta make big plays. And he probably lost the most important Pokemon in this matchup, since Swampert was the one thing I couldn't really deal with effectively. The only way I could KO hit was Grass Knot, so I was actually relying on, for example, um, as he's just gonna switch in Volcarona and Politoed, which is really good news for me here. So I'm just gonna go for the Return and the Grass Knot, yeah. Uh, though it might have been a better idea to switch Thunderous out into Scrafty, so I could lock myself into Thunderbolt, because... Oh, he's got the hidden power. So he's scarfed as well. And he knocks me out. Um, but that's actually going to be game. So I should have anticipated scarf actually by switching out, but... Um, yeah, I mean, that was the one thing I knew. Like, oh, if my opponent has this, maybe he can come back into this game. But then now he has to deal with Scrafty and uh, my Thunderous. Though if he's got Flame Body, that could be really annoying because Grass Knot is contact and HP Ice is super effective. So this is definitely not over yet. <laughs> Um, what could I have done better? Protect- I should have protected with Salamence, that's what I should have done. And then switched out into Scrafty. So, uh, not a good play on my end there. I think I'm just gonna go for the Fake Out Grass Knot here. Get free damage off, free damage is always good. Oh, he's gonna forfeit. Wow! So I don't think my opponent should have forfeited there, because, I mean, he probably didn't know my- the fact that I was 
scarfed um, on Thunderous. That was probably the biggest thing, but he actually could have had a chance to win that one if he was uh, flame body. because uh, if I burned myself somehow, and chances are were relatively high. I mean, against the Assault Vest, Scrafty, though, I could just snarl away, so probably not, but, you know, with crits, anything can really happen, but... I'm not going to complain, we're going to pick up two wins today against a lot of rain, but two different, completely different kind of rain teams, and in that second game, that grass not on Soul Polytoad really, really sealed the deal up, but hey, that was a fantastic episode once again. Man, I've just really enjoyed these episodes, like, not too much RNG, really close games, really cool teams as well. Didn't get to see Credelli or Escavalier in that last match, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave a like as always if you did. Uh, go check out Team Review Thursday if you have not already. Uh, there will be an individual Pokemon analysis coming out tomorrow on Hydreigon, and I'm actually going to be doing a team analysis on one of the Road to Rank teams on Sunday as well, most likely. So keep your eyes open for that, and Trainer Tip Tuesdays will be back next Tuesday as well. So lots of lots of additional content coming out for all of you. Anyway, you guys are the best. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. All right, peace. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to check out Clash Tournaments, my sponsor on YouTube and Twitter. They offer some of the best Super Smash Bros. content out there, and I'm super grateful for them. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch, as you see in the boxes below. See you guys soon!